Well, we've done it. We've done a complete study of the full accounting cycle. It's complete in almost every aspect, at least as far as we'll learn in Financial Accounting 1110 and 1120. Learn a little bit more in Intermediate Accounting. I want you to know that we'll use parts of the accounting cycle in every chapter from this point forward, and you need to understand it well. If you don't understand how to journalize, post, and do trial balances, make financial statements, then you're not going to be able to be successful in accounting 1110. So this is the point where if you have any confusion, you go back, you review some videos, some lectures, you do whatever you need to do to get yourself to a B level of understanding grade-wise so you're able to move on. Let's take a look at the accounting cycle. Here's an author's version of it. You analyze business transactions and post them in the general journal in chronological order. Or you journalize in the general journal in chronological order. Then you post the results of the journalizing into the ledger. You prepare an unadjusted trial balance. You journalize and post those adjusting entries and any correcting entries might need to do, not in a new journal, but in the next available line of the old journal, then you prepare an adjusted trial balance. From that you prepare financial statements, you prepare and post closing entries, and there you prepare a post-closing trial balance so that you're ready to start the next accounting period, and so the cycle goes. We've been looking at it from another perspective as well. Um, one that I made on the complete accounting cycle using a general journal. You'll understand a little bit more why I say general journal versus special journals after chapter 7. In my, mine is more a picture of how it goes in the accounting cycle. You record things in the general journal. You analyze transactions, record in the general journal post to the general ledger, total the accounts, prepare an unadjusted trial balance to make sure everything went all right. Then you start the sequence again. You make adjusting entries on the next available line in the general journal. You post those to the general ledger on the next available line in the general ledger. Total that and make an adjusted trial balance. From that you can make financial statements. You need to do that before you make closing entries in the general journal, post it on the next available line, which you then post to the general ledger, and prepare a post-closing trial balance. So you can see there's three steps that we do three times. Journalize, post, trial balance. Journalize, post, trial balance. Journalize, post, trial balance. The purpose of trial balances is to prove the quality of debits and credits and so if you've made a mistake, you catch it and you know what part of the journal you need to find your error in. In some problems, they might have you leave off the first trial balance or the second trial balance. You don't need to make those. Those are just a proof that the first, that each sequence of steps has gone well. I never skip that because um, it's easier to locate errors in smaller areas in the general journal or the general ledger, then if I get to the end and it doesn't balance. Well, I hope you enjoyed our study of Chapter 4 in the Accounting Cycle. This completes looking at the Accounting Cycle, and from now on, we'll start looking at specific topics in accounting.